You know, I started off on a community radio station in Minneapolis with a 4 a.m. shift, mixing for an hour with maybe three listeners if I was lucky, and, and worked my way up, and it wasn't easy. <laughs> you know, I got told no and had way yeah. more failures than I've had successes, but it's just being persistent and not giving up. This is Entrepreneurs the Playbook, where I give you access each week to the world's greatest athletes and executives about their personal and professional playbook and what has made them champions on and off the field. This is The Playbook. Welcome to Entrepreneur The Playbook. This is Dave Meltzer, CEO of Sports One Marketing. And I have to tell you, this is the first true talent. I've had a bunch of athletes, you know, we have Apollo Ono, we got football players. But to me, DJ, it, that is a talent, and I have DJ Ski, that's Scott Keeney. Yep. And before you start, Scott, I'm gonna tell you something really quick. Okay. Um, my cousin, who mm-hmm. grew up in my hyper-academic family, is a DJ, and his dad is a famous doctor, and he was like the biggest disappointment <laughs> ever. And for now, he's in his 40s, uh-huh. and I laugh because I think my cousin mm-hmm. makes more money than my <laughs> uncle the doctor, and it's like the best revenge ever. But anyway, welcome Scott Keeney to The Playbook. Thank you for having me. Yeah, DJ's come full circle, so we're doing all right now. Right on, well, speaking of that full circle, um, I really am curious, how did you become a DJ? I started off when I was a teenager. I just knew, you know, I, I always grew up playing sports and I thought I was going to be a pro athlete until I got my hand on, on records and a set of turntables. And I just knew instantly at that moment, I was like, this is what I'm going to do. This is like and how old my destiny. I was about 15 at that oh, time. Cool, cool. So from, from then on, that was just my like laser focus. And like, it wasn't cocky in the way. I was just like, no, this is like what I'm going to do. This is my destiny. And did you, did you fast, uh, face the same kind of familiar pressure that my cousin did where a lot of people going, are you kidding? You want to be a DJ? At first, you know, a lot of people didn't understand, but I was, I was lucky to have great parents who encouraged me and always would, you know, say, Hey, do whatever, follow your passions, follow your heart, figure it out. And yeah, there might've been some times with them or my family thought I was crazy and rightful, <laughs> rightfully so. But, uh, you know, I, I was always encouraged really well, which I think is, you know, very important. What do your, what do your parents do? So my, they were both teachers. So my dad was in academics and then he's, he's gone on to, you know, become a leader across the world in, in ancient cultures and like going in with the Bushmen and things like that. So totally out in left field. And my mom actually was in radio. Like her mom was in radio. She was awesome. then a teacher forever. So, you know, it was all my, academia. My mom was a teacher radio. too. Yeah, I, I get great. That. Yep. Now, did you get good grades in high school? I did good. good. I did good in high school. Yeah, because so your parents were teachers. Yeah, exactly. And what sure. was your favorite subject? My favorite subject unquestionably really was I took uh, a recording class on engineering and that's actually what got me into DJing. My, my high school in, in St. Paul, Minnesota randomly had a recording studio somebody had donated and I took a class on engineering and that piqued my interest and I was like, I realized I wasn't an artist, like I can't sing, I can't rap, I can't do anything else like that. But I was like, engineering's fun, but I want to do a little more. And kind of DJing's the next step in that. It's playing music from that, from a technical and audiophile standpoint. So if it wasn't for that class, I I probably wouldn't be here today. Now, I don't believe in luck, right? I think that, you know, people tell me all the time, I'm one of the luckiest people that they've met. But I know what it took for me to get Mm -hmm. here, lose everything and get here again. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, what is your playbook of, you know, inspiring kids, right? There's a ton mm-hmm. of kids out there that want to follow their passion, yeah. right? There's esports now, there's DJ, it's there's, incredible. Music, you know, are all types of artists, there's, there's weird, obscure professions that our parents, parents like me, yeah. won't understand. Now, I'm For open sure. like your parents. I'm telling mm-hmm. my kids, do what you love to do. That's it. What do you, what would you say to someone that's young that wants to be something different, not a doctor, lawyer, or teacher? Yeah. What, what, how, how would you encourage them? Do it. I mean, that's like, don't give up. And, and one thing that I find with this generation and, and with all the positives that you're talking about, everything is so accessible. You can do anything, but there's also some challenges because of, you know, we live in this social media society that forces all these things on people. There's a lot of pressure and people think it's going to happen overnight. They're like, oh, I want to start DJing and next week I'm going to be DJing in, in Vegas and then I'm going to be do, headlining Coachella. And it's like, no, that takes Thank years you. and years and years. And even if you look at these artists like Kendrick Lamar, somebody that I worked on, you know, I, we were looking at, I found old footage a couple months ago of his first show ever that I actually booked. And this is 11 years ago. And now over the past couple of years, he's gotten his recognition, but it did not happen overnight. It didn't happen overnight for me. You know, I started off on a community radio station in Minneapolis with a 4 a.m. shift mixing <laughs> for an hour with maybe three listeners if I was lucky yeah. and worked my way up and it wasn't easy. And if I, you know, I got told no and had way more failures than I've had successes, but it's just being persistent and not giving up. So I would, my advice would be- my wife, by the way. <laughs> I got so many more no's than yeses, See, but I like, you got her. and to me, that's the greatest, you know, blessing of my life yeah. is I ended up this fabulous lady, right? And, awesome. But it's not luck. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. No. No. You 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 go out and 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 execute. And luck is you know, luck doesn't happen unless you put yourself in those situations and you have the experience to take advantage of opportunities. If somebody you know, for example, when I got connected with certain people, if I didn't have the experience and put in the work and even work to get to be in the position to be around that and and get lucky, it wouldn't have happened. So it's interesting. I talk and speak a lot about innovators mm -hmm. versus entrepreneurs, and it's really too artists yeah. compared to business people. Yeah. Now, to me, an innovator is someone that can take a thought mm -hmm. and make it real. So as a DJ, you can create different things yeah. and produce music and do all this stuff. But there's probably, in my opinion, thousands mm -hmm. of really talented DJs in the world. Yeah. But there's a certain difference between an innovator like yourself, but you're mm -hmm. also an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. someone that knows how to monetize the innovation yeah. we live at this vibration it's yeah. great to be a musician and an artist and creative and all mm -hmm. of us have great ideas tell me what that secret sauce is that takes you from being an artist but mm -hmm. allows you to not only be an artist but be a real money-making machine yeah. a business person for me i always had this like entrepreneurial gene where you know I, I the way i even got connected in the music industry to end up in la was i got connected with the ceo of loud and sony records by at the time i was selling like playstation 2s and xboxes when they came out and selling for double the money on ebay nice all my friends would work i never wanted to work a nine to five so my friends were working at you know target or best buy or wherever and i'd slide them 20 to tell me when the shipments were coming in and i'd go buy them all up and sell them for double the money so i got connected with him through that and you know, from there I was DJing, but he, he hired me because I sent him then a proposal on what I thought he was doing wrong with his label just because I was, you know, hey, wanted to build this relationship with him and saw the value in that. Didn't want anything, didn't ask for anything. He loved it so much he, he moved me to L.A. when I was 17 and, and offered me a job. So um, I kind of then worked on the industry side of things before. I was always DJing, but my DJ career didn't blow up until later on. But it was because of that foundation that I had on the business side that I was able to kind of take that to, to the artist side. Usually, you know, I was I was, you know, I guess blessed that I had the business foundation before the artist career blew up because I really understand stood a lot more than you know the typical artist in terms of ROIs and running businesses and dealing with clients and campaigns. Oh, and trust me, man. You I'm, know, I was an agent, so athletes so, are no oh different than God. artists. Yeah, right? you know, I, and I ran Lee Steinberg, and, and I would say, yeah. "How the heck is this guy ever going to make money?" I'm babysitting him and he's 25 years old. Yeah, and they're like, yeah, you know, just I'll, I'll post that up. Just give me $10 million. I'm like, oh, it doesn't necessarily, <laughs> like it has to make sense for everybody. So I understood all that early on yeah. and, and was able to apply that and build businesses from taking the experiences I've had on, on both sides. And what what is your biggest, like you've done a bunch of different businesses mm -hmm. and I'll get a little bit into that. What's your biggest failure as yeah. an entrepreneur or business person? I mean, so many, there's been so many projects and things that, that I've worked on that, that haven't panned out. And, you know, you obviously, we showcase and, and highlight the ones that, that do work out, but no, I, I mean, I don't think anybody's ever batted a thousand, you know, never, it, unless it, they it only did one thing and then they're not trying. Way. Yeah. And even <laughs> and looking back at things that haven't worked out, I've learned my lesson from, you know, and even things that have been successful at times and, you know, fizzled out or had, you know worked a little bit like I've always taken things from that that have helped me in the in the next ventures and, and that's why I feel like it's prepared me for today and even what I'm doing with Dash it's like the perfect culmination of everything I've done from radio business media even sports and things so and what's the biggest lesson you did learn from those failures um Just give me one I think the biggest thing is is to, to not give up is to, to keep pushing forward that you know you're, you're never out of the game until you you quit I mean look it could be the bottom of the ninth inning you could be down five runs not looking so good, but it's not over until, you know, you, you, you tap out until you get that final out. And the, and the great thing about our lives and, and being business people is that we're really in control and can, can say when. So it's interesting that you said that I, you know, do a lot of the playbook and persistence mm -hmm. is always the key. Yeah. Now, as athletes, and, and you said you were an athlete when you were younger as yeah. well. One of the things that I think goes against us as entrepreneurs is we're taught never to quit. Yeah. Have you ever had a business, and this was my biggest downfall. Yeah. I never quit, right? It's fourth down, 99 yeah. yards to go. Yeah. I think I could score the touchdown. Of course. Have, have you ever been able to walk away from an opportunity or a deal and quit yeah. and just know, you know what, I'm cutting my losses? Because for me, yeah. that was the hardest lesson to learn. For sure. And it was tough. Early on, no. And it's like you'd sometimes chase good money or oh, you know, bad money with good money and you keep losing out on those things and you have to learn like look sometimes you you walk away and but then those lessons that you learn if you embrace them and see where you what went wrong and what went right so you don't make those mistakes or can make something better from that but yeah i'd say when i was younger and early on you know you keep going after things and going after those little hustles and things that seem too good to, to be true and they always they, they always, always are work, right? right guaranteed you, you hear that here on the playbook number <laughs> yeah. one rule for me if it's too good to be true it is it is
I haven't seen it ever fail. Yeah. That's a, it's an amazing thing. Now, I'm going to ask you another question here. Yeah. Um, do you love being a DJ more today than when you were 16 years old? I don't know. I think it's about, it's the same. It's different. You know, cool. back then it was more about playing and music and the technical art of DJing. Now for me, DJing is, you know, and as DJing has evolved into a whole new world, I look at myself as, you know, DJs are people that always would traditionally introduce music. And now because of the internet and because of just the way culture is, DJs are people that have, you know, introduced everything from, you know, new things going on. Like me as a host, it's introducing new products, new, you know, new platforms, new, you know, DJing has just kind of evolved for me into being outside of more than music, if that makes any sense. Sure. How's video playing into mm -hmm. your DJ career? right now video has been huge i mean with with what i did with ski tv is what really helped you know i was having a, i had a great dj career but that even took it to another level and especially when you know mark cuban called me and gave me a tv show from that and yeah like, i'm a fan of your youtube stuff do you want to do a tv show and i was like uh yeah <laughs> so How can you like, say no right yeah, what a great guy he exactly. is he's incredible so and another guy you work with that i like is akon yeah right how, how, how'd you meet him akon was one of the first artists we had signed when i moved out here to work for for steve rifkin who was the ceo of loud and sony so yep. he was the i did his first ever mixtape first ever shows i remember we did an event with i forget what liquor company and you know he was performing in the backyard and nobody came out to, to watch him perform and then two years later the biggest artist in the world but yeah. you know i've known him since you know he, so, he was nobody too. Yeah, early on in his career. So I, I was at CES. Okay. And we had one of those 20,000 square foot uh, suites up in Caesars. And the people from China said, because I was an agent, mm -hmm. right? Introduce us to everyone. We want to meet, you know, we don't know who they are, but you know, if LeBron James yep. come in, let it. And so Akon walks in and someone whispers in my ear and it's loud in there. People are drinking Cristal <laughs> out of the bottles, you know, it's crazy. Yep. And I, he's like, oh, that's Akon at the door. Well. I said, hey, Acorn, Acorn. <laughs> and because I didn't really know who he was, right? And he gives me a big hug. And he just thinks I think I'm buzzed That's and joking. Hilarious. So the whole night, someone would come up and I'm like, yo, yo, Acorn, Acorn, come over here, brother. That's incredible. And he was so cool. Right? He's awesome, He played right? along. He and I still think it. to this day that he thought I knew his name, but was just making but fun of his he, name. He's smart, you know. He, he realizes, <laughs> no, but he realizes the connection that you have. And all right, those and the things. money like that was, was li listening, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so in China, they think of his as Acorn. I think they're going to like sign all these agreements awesome. for Acorn. I'm going to go, pat, I'm gonna go trademark all those names and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I won't tell you what Applejack, <laughs> that guy. But at, at, Now, you were at Excess. I saw you at Excess, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Was, yep. I'm an old Open school Vegas stuff, guy, so I should probably reveal too much <laughs> yeah. on top of that. Crazy nights. <laughs> well, I, I always ask people to... Tell me, or sorry, let me know about um, your legacy, right? You're yeah. young still. How old yeah. are you? 30, I'll be 34 in a week. Oh, so. I don't even look at that. So yeah. here's a 34-year-old. Do you mm -hmm. think about your legacy and what you're going to leave? Um, yes and no. Yes, but I don't want to get too caught up and, and even worried in that. I really want to live for the moment and take what it is. I mean, I want my life. If people, when people ask me that question... Right now, I'd say my, I want my legacy is to be somebody that finds people way smarter and way better than me and empowers them to become 10 times bigger than, than I've been. Because I think that's the best thing that you can leave is, is empowering others and even affecting those lives. So that's kind of what, you know, I look at my legacy. It's not for myself. It's, it's how do I help the others around me? That's one of my key sayings. Empower yeah. others to empower yeah. others to be happy. 100%. So, and, and then you feel really good. And now it you, always comes back full circle. Do you do some stuff for charity as well? Uh, of course. You know, I try to involve myself in as many charity things as I can. You know, I haven't built my own foundation just because there's so many that I've worked with. And, you know, for me personally, a lot of artists do that. And I was like, look, I'll just, you know, there's already so many things pre-existing. Let me lend my time and effort instead of spending all these resources trying to get my own thing off the ground. Let me work with, with everybody. So, you know, I recently just did some stuff with partnership with, you know, the Partnership for Healthy living out here with you know it's basically michelle obama's charity yeah. have fruits and vegetables to you know everything from the un nation or the uh, united nations foundation to after school all-stars to you know place called home you name it now what do you love to do when you're not working <laughs> i mean sports are a passion to me but now what's you know, your favorite sport <sighs> It's tough. It depends on the season. Football, Minnesota baseball, fan? basketball. Minnesota fan? Minnesota. I still DJ like all Warren the Vikings Moon? games. Do you know who Warren Moon is? Of course. Is? So, of course. you know, that's my business that. partner. It's incredible. He, he is it's incredible. The Vikings. Now you're going to go to the Super Bowl this year? I, I am. I'm doing all those things. And it's been incredible. Like my dream, like now I'm on the field every weekend at every Vikings game, DJing the game, shooting the content, oh, introducing really? the teams. Yeah, it's like, Oh, I'm coming up. Living I'm my dream. Coming Come up. out anytime. I can do everything like short of call a, 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 a play in the huddle. That is awesome. So, yeah, so you know, we're doing a party at Paisley Park. 
That's incredible. At Prince's house. Uh-huh. So you're going to have to come to that on I, Wednesday I will. night. Absolutely. And I know Warren re- really wants to, to meet you. He, I would like every great to. athlete, I'd be honored. I mean, I, I grew up DJ. watching him. Well, let's, let's connect because I grew up watching him. I just need like a signed football or jersey Anything or something. Anything you need, so Warren Moon. In. I remember yeah. when he first came to Minnesota. It's funny. I was listening to the radio and they made the announcement and they did the whole special. Like the whole city was just going chaotic when we got him. And, you know, those were great years for the Vikings. Yeah. Well, you, you know, I, I love Viking fans and anyone that can appreciate tough. that it's purple tough number sometimes. one. Well, I'm a yeah. Charger and Padre fan. It gets so you know how tougher. it is. It's tough. Now, talking back to the, the playbook, mm-hmm. you know, I, I have certain things, certain pieces of advice. Yeah. Give me, give me one of your kind of inside playbook. If I was coming to you as a young DJ or a young yeah. entrepreneur and saying, hey, you know, give me some advice. Where do I start? How do I get good? Because getting started is the key, right? right? It's tough. It's getting off the ground. I mean, and I think that's really it. It's like, just go out and, and do it. And a lot of people, you know. Well, when you say just do it, what does that mean? Because you know, I'm not a DJ. I don't know what sure. it means just to do it. I think you just have to go out and make it happen. You have to put in the effort. You have to, to go out and start it. And, you, you know, take advice from and listen to as many things as you can. But my path is going to be different than yours, which is going to be different than yours, which is going to be different than his and hers. So, d- like, listen and take advice from others, but realize that you're going to create your own journey that's going to be unique to you so you don't have to follow in others go with your gut and you know you just have to to go for it just jump in if you if you're if you're thinking of you have this idea go out and put it together it might work it might not but you're going to learn either way don't just sit there and, and wait forever you've got to go for it now you're a guy who stays present right you live in the moment oh yeah um how do you teach somebody to detach from an outcome. So, yeah. you know, there's a conflict between, how, you have plenty of goals, I'm sure, yep. a great vision, but you like to live in the moment. How would you describe uh, to, to those people, hey, this is how I have a goal, but I live in the moment. Explain yeah. what that means to you. For sure, and it, it's taken me a while to realize that. I used to always just be about future, future, future. This is gonna get me this, which is gonna get me that. But I've realized that, you know, look, you, you hey, for just living and being happy, you have to embrace everything that's going on. Like. Look where I am. Look who I'm talking to. And we're talking about Warren Moon. And he wants to be, what the hell is going on? Like, if you would have told me this as a kid, you know, and you have to embrace and, and realize those things, not satisfy and like quit, but, you know, kind of embrace those things and live in the moment, but always have an eye on, on the future and, and what's next. It's, it's playing that balance game and remembering the past, not enough to dwell on it, but to, to learn from and, and always looking forward, but also, you know, living it for right now because that's all that, that, that's here. Future isn't guaranteed, so you can't put all your eggs in that basket. For sure. Last question, you know, it's a, a unique one, but mm-hmm. define happiness for me. Yeah. Happiness is getting up every morning and being excited to, to, to get out of bed. I think, you know, that's really the, the key. It's, it's something, you know, the last thing, and we've all had, you know, everybody's been depressed and been sad. So, you know, the, there's nothing worse than not wanting to get up and do things and not being motivated. So for me, so, you know, it's, it's just getting, getting up, getting out and doing it. That means you're, you're happy because you, you want, you're looking forward to the next day. You're looking forward to that. I can't wait till when I wake up in the morning, it's like, oh, I got to get the sleep done with. So, so I can get, you know, get to the next thing. Well, that's the way I felt this morning. Yeah. You know, I, I get a lot of people I know on my yeah. podcast and on the playbook. Yeah. And so it, it is fun and I enjoy yeah. the pursuit of my potential, learning how to do this the same way. But what's cool for me is I was really looking forward to get to meet you. Oh, I appreciate uh, you it. Know, I, you I, so I've watched from afar. I mean, your legacy talent, is incredible, man. especially <laughs> me being such a sports fan. So well, we've got I, mean, a lot I appreciate to talk it. about. I'm going to interview you next. And have I, I hope so. so. And I, I want, you know, you're my new best friend. Let's do in, this. In, in, you know, you're in New York now, too. I'm in L.A. So. You're in L.A. Even yep. better. Oh, exactly. So I'm back and forth all the time. Yeah. But we're definitely going to hook up for the Super Bowl. Warren's going to want to meet you. Let's do it. And most of all, I'm so grateful for the insight and plays that you've given our audience. I'm sure I'll have you back again. Thank you. Anytime. I'm always well. If you need anything, let me know. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Scott. This is Dave Meltzer with DJ Ski, Scott Keeney, on the playbook with Entrepreneur. Yes. It it goes back to saying you can't be great at many things, right? You can only be great at one thing. You're going to be good at many. So I always took that into anything that I ever did. And, you know, I like to stay laser focused on one thing.